we're printing so much money. And I think it's a spot a lot of people miss out on. They they call way too, way too tight in those spots. That's why it's so good to, to, to probably just jam 100% here. Hey guys, Ben CB here, and today we are going over a couple of bounty spots, especially spots where we are supposed to be calling very loose. You might, um, you might recognize those spots when we are when we have the feeling we're supposed to be calling very wide, but we are not really sure how wide, like any two, eighty percent, fifty percent, like we don't really know where the threshold is. And I'm going to share the tools that I'm using. Um, those tools are coming with a um, bounty course. Of course, it's something we have been working for a very long time and something we cannot provide for free. We have been investing a lot of money into developing those tools, the mathematics, and uh, yeah, basically the mechanics in bounty tournaments in order to um, develop such a such a tool. And yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna jump right into it. And the first hand here is on the in a one thousand dollar tournament uh, on on uh, party poker. And it's folded to the button, and we have the situation, and that's very, very important. Um, it's always about how many players are left, because the value of a bounty changes throughout a tournament. So here we have a 170 player um, tournament with 171 entries, and we have 55 players left. Bottom line: the more players bust, the more valuable the bounties become. So the more money that is taken out of the bounty price pool, the more valuable becomes the bounty. So we have the situation that button open jams, and as you can see here, um, he has a bounty as high as $1,560. He has three starting bounties. So as you can see, when we have a starting stack on, pounty, uh, on party poker, it's 50,000. If the starting stack is 50,000 chips, and he has slightly above starting stack, and he has already collected three starting bounties. We're supposed to be calling very wide, but how wide actually? So that's the question here. In game, I was not really sure how wide to call. I was pretty sure somewhere between 70 and 80 percent, or somewhere around 70 percent, and I was not really sure whether it was 65 or 75 percent. So I wanted to make sure that I ended up calling because I also thought if if I double up. Um, I I catch up to the other players because I only have 20 bigs and this is the only player I'm, I'm covering so in terms of EV getting his bounty is very big for me. Uh, when you let's say when you're in a situation that you're the second shortest stack and you have the opportunity to bust the other player that also has a relatively high bounty then I think it's totally reasonable to also take a march in the spot and to gamble a little bit in order to catch up to the other players. We then have around 160,000 in chips we cover cutoff uh, and we are very, very close to the other six as well. Like if we fold now, like we basically need to um, double up against one of the bigger stacks or even, um, yeah, if 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 we then, we, most of the time we're gonna be um, blinding down and by the time we double up, we won't be even close to the other players as well because they can keep raising a lot. And on average, the V for those players is they will increase their stacks and our, our stack will diminish until we find a hand or until we find a uh, setup for ourselves. So <clears throat> I put in everything in here. Uh, I use this tool. We are in the big blind. So we have 171 players, 55 players remaining. And this tool, this algorithm in this tool already recognizes, okay, when there are 171 players um, and 55 players remaining, then the bounty, the value of the bounty is, let's say, it starts always starts with 33%. And then the closer it gets to the final table, it reaches 38, 42, 45% of the starting stack. And this is something you will learn in the bounty course. Of course, this is something where we needed hours of, of, of explanation and then, of course, presented in a way where it's very practical. You get all the tools, all the um, yeah stuff that you need in order also to make the, the proper in-game calculations uh, and also the tools so you can study bounty tournaments. Uh, small blind, big blind in here, the antis, how many players per table or on this right table. So it calculates all the chips that are in play and then the number of starting players of the player that is jamming. Starting stack 50,000, that's very important because um, we want to 
estimate or want to calculate what is the value of one bounty compared to the starting stack in order to find out what is our equity. And then we click on calculate and you can see if we are in a freeze out tournament, we would need 45%. And here you can only see the equity drop is 12%. So we need 12% less equity. Then we go into Power Equilab and no, that's not the hand. Uh, yeah, anyway, we can do it here as well. Um, so clear all. let's give assign him a, a range. Uh, my power equilibrium is bugging a little bit. Okay. So I think he would be slow playing some of these stronger hands. So I think his jamming range would be something like this. I think King Queen suited should be also raise call because especially on bounties, let's say he has King Queen suited. Um, he's going to play in position with hands that are very strong. Uh, it's also a big mistake that I see that people just go ahead and jam 50 bakes. So let's say if we have a pair or if we have a weaker hand that we're going to call off, uh, we're going to re-jam like King Jack or King 10 off anyway, or we're supposed to because his bounty is so huge. And we, we only need like very little full equity in order to make it a profitable play. So here, if you have King Queen suited, you should be race calling instead of open jamming, even with something like Queen Jack. If we have, if we have King Deuce off, we're going to call it off anyway. But what happens is that, um, that what happens is that we also play in position against a very wide range that would sometimes even consider folding. I mean, the thing is, if you play against someone that is not really bounty aware, then you probably want to be open shoving. Um, because he's just calling king. This would be very horrible. So let's say he just calls king jack off. This would be really bad for e your EV or even some of the weaker suited kings. So maybe against most players, it's actually better to open jam, but in theory, it should be a raise call. Um, so let's assume he sometimes raises, he sometimes jams. And then, yeah, these hands here, he should be very high card heavy. Uh, so suited kings are very good. And then the off suited aces, um, yeah, something like this, because we're going to be calling a hand like king five off or queen do suited anyway. And then he has very good equity. So I think he should even skip those suited connectors. Um, yeah. And then the lower pocket pairs, maybe something like this. Uh, and then let's see, we need 33.65%. Uh, so we want to be calling all hands that have more than 34%, which would basically be this range. And you can see a 7-4 off is probably very borderline. So 7-5 off is a very good call here. And I, I'm really happy once I see that. I would have thought that it's somewhere between 70-75%, like only in, ex in a worse best case in our 80%. But yeah, I think we should be really calling 80%. Uh, 80 I think that's a spot where it's totally okay to, to gamble, even take a margin spot to go for a big bounty. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to see this result. It's, uh, since also something or an area that probably most of us haven't been studying a lot, bounties haven't been, ar uh, around for forever. So all of us, we haven't really studying as much as not freeze out tournaments. So especially in those spots where ranges are very wide, it's really hard to be way off and it's totally okay to do a lot of mistakes, even though you study them. So it's just important to reduce these blunders. Uh, more and more and try to be more and more accurate in those spots. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this spot. And uh, so yeah, as a, as a rule of thumb, if you play against someone that has a little bit more than starting stack and he open jams and even if it's 50 or 20 big blinds and you cover him, you're supposed to be calling very wide, even though his range is relatively tight. So yeah, I made the call. Uh, we flop very good, but unfortunately she hits his king and then we're short stacking and, uh, yeah, let's go to the next hand. 10-9 off, was it this hand? No, it was not this hand. Uh, I had a couple of hands that I marked. Okay. This is, this was a very interesting spot. Um, so the button open jams here and he can see that it's a, also again party. So we have half of a starting stack <laughs> and this is a spot where and, and we, both of us, we just had one starting bounty and this guy open jams. And 
we, we're not going to analyze it from his perspective. We're going to analyze it from our perspective, what our calling range is supposed to be um, in these spots. So I prepared this in HRC. It's a very easy spot to analyze. You can take HRC here. There's no bounty to win. So you can analyze as it would be a freeze out tournament. So since it's insanely printing for him to jam and like, I mean, we have half of a starting stack and when one starting stack sorry one bounty one bounty at the beginning is worth one third of a starting stack which would be in this um starting stack so in this spot it would be around uh what is it 25k starting stack i know sorry it's 50k starting stack so let's be a little bit more on the safe side okay it's 80 80k I, actually, I mean, now it's also a later stage in the tournament, so let's let's go with 20k. I think it's a very nice number to 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 work with. So there's already 20, roughly 20k in in dead money in the middle, and then if you see that there's already roughly 20k in dead money in the middle, <laughs> like he's supposed to go bananas. Like it, I wouldn't be surprised if this is an 82 spot, but again, it's always hard to say whether he recognizes the spot as such if he even knows how valuable one bounty is in this spot. So, but yeah, we'll see, we're gonna make some assumptions and then see what we're supposed to be calling with here. So I assume that he might be trapping with some hands. Um, yeah, something like the 60%. I think, I mean, we can go even tighter, but I think this is already a very tight assumption here, like 50%. Um, he should be shoving that at least. If you just saw in the previous spot that we can call it off, 7-5 off um, for like one and a half starting stacks. And here we have half of a starting stack and he even has fold equity. And the small one even has one third of a starting stack or even less, then he should be jamming very wide. And you can see that even against this relatively tight range, it's it's already a call with 10-9 off suited here for 11 bigs. And if we even, let's say, we go a little tighter, um, maybe he doesn't recognize the spot. I mean, this would be like here suited connectors, even it's four to suited. It's just, he can gamble so much in this spot. Um, let's see. And you can see even then it's slightly profitable. So even in the worst case scenario, it's slightly profitable. And this is something I really like doing that if I analyze, and again, this is a problem we all have to deal with. We don't really know what our opponents are up to. So based on your experience, make a worst case scenario, make a normal case scenario and make a best case scenario. So let's say, I mean, 14 king five off or not jamming would be, I think that's, uh, it's not going to happen. But let's say, let's make a best case scenario. And he goes really insanely bananas here, which is probably the right thing in theory. Jams more of these, more like 72%. And then with 10-9 off, we're, we're printing so much money. And I think it's a spot a lot of people miss out on. They they call way too, way too tight in those spots. That's why it's so good to, to, to probably just jam 100% here. Um, yeah, and uh, MRTI Queen 10 suited, so we don't really know whether we were right with our assumption but I really like my call in hindsight. I'm also very happy to see that I'm um, very much, because it feels so unnatural to call it off with 10-9 off, but when ranges are so wide, it's just that you have to put in your money very, very wide. Um, okay, this was another hand. And then let's move on. I mean... You guys know that I'm also posting hands where I do mistakes that I want to share with you. Um, these are just standard spots that I checked here. Uh, there was another hand here, Jack nine suited. Um, we open race from the low Jack and small blind re -jams. And small blind had at this point in time, it's the bounty builder 500 on poker stars. He had $437.50 in bounty. So roughly it's a $500 tournament and um, so he had roughly three starting stacks. On PokerStars, they always display the amount that you can win. So on PokerStars, 
you start with 125 that's displayed and when it's displaying 437 you have roughly three like 3.5 starting stacks so again i put it in here now we choose the option facing regem out of uh, small blind and this one was a 1000 run out tournament with 287 players left so now the bounties are actually very valuable um $250 into the regular price pool, $250 into the bounty price pool. Our stack, blinds, um, anti, numbers of player, um, my open race sizing, his regem sizing, including the small blind, starting stack and number of his bounty. And then you see we need 34.6%. Also here, an equity drop more than 10%. So let's assign him a range. Uh, we have... Okay, let's know first we so yeah, maybe he has more he has around what is he rejamming? Twenty five picks. Yeah, around twenty five picks. I think he could be trapping with aces sometimes and uh, three bet. Uh same with kings sometimes. I think um it's very, very realistic. I mean that's okay, let's let him rejam kings more often. Um I mean, you never really know the, how people think. Some of you guys might say, hey, but Ben, if you call so wide, does it not make more sense to read him aces? The point is, we don't know what he's up to. He might also be thinking, well, if I three bet, given my big bounty, he has to call a queen 10 off. Like, there's certainly some hands we're supposed to fall. So with a three bet, you leech in more hands or you make, um, you invite him to make much looser calls with very low equity hands, especially when you have aces or kings. Yeah, I think ace king, like these hands are always reshoving. Uh, yeah, maybe some king jack suited as well. Uh, some ace nine suited. And then, of course, all these pairs here, I think, down to sevens. Um, yeah, I think maybe very rarely a king queen off. And then let's see. Again, we need. Yeah, let's, let's stick with 35% here. Uh. And you can see that this time I'm called a little bit too loose. I mean, I gave myself a little edge. Um, wait, I was also just studying a little bit with Pio. Here it is. Um, so yeah, 25 bigs, I called it off. He had kings. So, I mean, the range I assume is already, uh, sorry, this one. The range that I assume is already tight. He might be having a bit more of the pairs or an ace 10 off, which of course is much better for my Jack 9 suited. Um, but yeah, I think it's a it's a very realistic assumption. Uh, we also give ourselves a little little edge. So if we go with the 34.64%, <laughs> of course you always want to find a reason to justify your call, right? <laughs> Uh, 35.6%. Ah, it's still not in there. Is it 34.6? No. Yeah. It's still not in there. So a little bit too loose. But here's my take on these spots. If you if you see that it's so close, and you can see queen 9 suit, 10 9 suit, so jack 9 suit is, is very, very, very marginal here. I'm totally okay with that. Bounties are so complex, you have a bazillion of different spots. If, let's say you call you with queen eight suited, if you call with nine eight suited, that's all right. Move on. You made a marginal call, that's fine. It will never be, no, never cost your win rate. Let's say if you call here with king nine off or ace six off, dude, then you need to be working on that spot. Then you need to write down, okay, this is the spot, 25 big blinds. Here's three starting stack. Here I need to be raised calling very much tighter. I, I have a leak here. But if you call these borderline hands here, or let's say you fold ace jack off, or you fold queen nine suited, um, or even 10 nine suited, or even pocket deuces, then so it be, all right? But it's very, very important. And especially as you can see here, these uh, suited broadways perform much better as suited aces or suited aces against tight ranges for obvious reasons. Um, because the range villain has is so much ace, like ace, all the ace kings, ace queens, ace jacks, especially this typical ace 10 plus or ace jack, plus rejamming range. These are always way more combos than aces to 10s. So 
um, jack nine suited or 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 jack ten or queen jack suited performs much better than a hand like ace eight ace seven suited. You always have to try to visualize villain's reshoving range to get a little bit little idea. Okay, do we want to go more towards the suited broadways or suited aces? So let's say his his reshoving range is let's say a small blind versus button regemming range where he regems more suited broadways, also some ten nine nine eight suiters. Then you start calling way more suited aces. But if it's a tight small blind versus MP reshoving range, you want to go more for um, a range that is defined around these suited broadways. So, because I see that in Discord over and over again, also for post club spots. Ben here, uh, I made this call, it's very close, and depending on the assumptions, it might actually be a good call, because you never really know what your opponent is 100% up to. So, relax when it's a marginal spot, of course, you still want to look into, but don't spend too much time uh, on these spots and move on. Rather, detect those spots that are very um, very minus CV or you, you missed a very plus CV spot. Uh, study those spots that, let's say, you, you're you tilting a lot because the tilt is often an indicator that, yeah, you're not very familiar with the right strategy, um, you lack experience, you are a little bit lost, you don't really know how to approach the spot, you have no, no idea what, what strategy you're supposed to play, and that creates a lot of uncertainty. Uncertainty is some sort of... Um, yeah, it leads very often to tilt. So the spots you tilt or the spots where you are aware of that you don't really feel comfortable playing in, analyze those spots. Also based on the feedback you get from others, based on the feedback you get from those tools. Let's say you're supposed to be calling with king eight suited and, and all these hands and then, and, uh, but you folded king 10 suited. This is of course a big mistake, right? So yeah when you get the the result from the tools result from others feedback from others and your own awareness those three areas will give you good feedback on which spots you're supposed to be working on don't hang on yourself too much on uh, these marginal spots um, of course it's definitely it should be on your agenda to also see whether it's the, the question you should ask yourself is it possible to get away from these marginal spots can i gain more future in dv that's what you should be asking yourself right um, but the shoulder we are, especially in bounties, sometimes we have to take those margin spots. All right, guys, that's it for today. Some bounty content uh, I thought it would be worth sharing with you. If you want to really study bounty terms, if you want to learn, then head over to raiseyedge.com and, and sign up for our bounty class. It will provide you very practical advice, very practical tools that you can use right away. You don't even need to study it weeks or months until you see results. It will show you right away what you need to do, how you can calculate it and how you can use it in game. Um, I think that's, that's the most powerful thing about the class. And yeah, if not, I'm going to, we're going to keep providing free content for, for YouTube. You can also learn a lot from that. I hear that. Um, people always say, yeah, your, your course is expensive. Yeah, we'll, we, we spend more than a year uh, conceiving those classes. We do a lot of research. So we invest a lot of time in it and we want to make uh, provide high class content that is going to be updated on a weekly, monthly, actually almost a weekly basis. So um, yeah, make sure that you, uh, that you check it out. And if not, take a pen and paper, make notes, be very assiduously, and then I'm pretty sure you will also learn a lot here. And I think for low stakes, um, it's it's totally enough. If you learn here from from what I'm providing you on YouTube, what we're providing in Discord with all the coaches, you can get free feedback. Um, you can write your own blog on raiseyouredge.com and get feedback from there. So there are a lot of opportunities to get the stuff for free. But of course, if you want to take a quote unquote shortcut and get it in a more digestible or let's say in a much more comprehensive way in a course where you don't need to, um, where it's, it's, it's more uh, um, separated in areas, which is of course much easier to learn, then all right. Right? You can spend the money, but if you don't have the money, there's still a way. I'm really sick of hearing those excuses, and that's why I'm doing it. There's no room for excuses. We offer a lot of free stuff. We, Of course, we offer a lot of paid stuff as well. So I encourage everyone, if you have this thought of, oh, but it's too expensive, then do me the favor. If you want to become a professional poker player, if you want to make some money, then study the free stuff. Join our Discord, engage with us. And we are constantly increasing uh, our coaches. So... 
increasing our coaches so sounds a little bit weird but yeah i really want to make sure that we have a lot of engagement in discord so join there engage with us and then i'm pretty sure you can lear learn a lot from there that's that's very very important to me and um, it means a lot to me that those people that are reaching out hey ben I, I was learning some stuff from your free stuff on youtube and i was able to have a deep run or i was able to apply some of the tips that you were sharing on youtube in one of my final tables or in one of the recent tournaments where i i want something and and that's that means everything to me and i want to keep doing that and this is basically the fuel for me and, and i really appreciate everyone giving feedback and even if it's negative feedback as long as it's um productive feedback constructive feedback that we can work on don't just say hey you're bad or it was a shitty play you can actually say that but then you should be sharing why and what can this person do better if if it's me i'm also a human being like if someone tells me hey you suck shit you, you misplayed this hand it's it's not nice it, it's simply not nice and you shouldn't treat others like this and if you don't have anything to provide in terms of value then just shut the fuck up don't say anything remain silent then nobody cares about you your your um childish opinion so you can give me as much negative feedback or others it's more about others i think i can take a lot of stuff but i know that there are a lot of players that actually want to pursue their dreams go for business or quit their jobs or escape the nine to seven or escape from their parents holding them da da back and not going for their poker career so and then it's if if you haven't been on this journey for for so long you're gonna give up much easier because of those people so please if you're one of these people stop doing it really reconsider how much damage you're actually inflicting onto others you're probably not going to do it in real life just going to someone hey you suck shit hey you bad so why you do it in the internet um so always think that on the other side there's also human being reading your comments try to stay positive try to pe lift people up and then i think some really beautiful things can happen in return if you if you provide value if you're always constructive and then i think we will have a much better word and, and that's very important all right guys a little rant here at the end didn't plan it but i feel the urge to to share that with you and yeah if you if you have any questions about these spots Ask them in the comments or join the Discord and then see you guys in the next video. Ciao.